In this presentation, we're going to add the purchase of inventory to our accounting with the use of bank feeds. In other words, we're going to see an outflow for purchases, those purchases for inventory items that we are going to sell again and add those to our financial statements. Get warmed up because we're dropping in with Wave. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars demo company dashboard. We're going to go on down to open up our reports once again. So we're going to go to the reports down below. We're opening up our two favorite reports, that being the balance sheet and the income statement or P&L, profit and loss, whichever you'd like to call it. We'll start off with the balance sheet. So we'll open up the balance sheet. Once that opens up, we're going to duplicate the tab, go into the tab up top, right clicking on it and duplicating it. So then we're going to go back to the tab to the left. We're going to do the same thing for the income statement. So I'm going to go back on down to the reports on the left hand side. We're going to be opening up the P&L profit and loss income statement. We're going to be right clicking on that right clicking on that tab up top again. And we're going to duplicate that tab as well. Then I'm going to go back to the first tab, the one with the balance sheet. We're going to update the dates, bring it on back to 2019. That's going to be the time period that we will be working with. So we're going to bring that on back to the 2019 and I'm going to go down. I always like to have the show details button on. So it'll give me uh, some information about the details. Let us kind of drill down on that information in more depth. And that gives us these kind of like jump to features, kind of the drill down type of features you may be used to in a uh, QuickBooks type of feature or in a zero, you know, accounting software. Then I'm going to do the same thing over here on the income statement. I jumped over to the income statement, by the way. Didn't tell you, but I went over there. And then we're going to go to the 2019, update that one. We'll do the same thing. I'm going to go down and uh, enter our information here. Now, we have the uncategorized expenses. That's basically what we're categorizing now. Most of them will be things like the utility, which we'll just have to categorize through the proper expense. However, we want to take a look at some of the more complex type of items, one of those being inventory. Now, if you don't have inventory, this isn't a problem. You could just basically go through this and recategorize uh, your information to expenses. If you have a service company, uh, it's going to be a lot easier for you to just basically use the bank feeds to categorize things out. If you have inventory, in essence, you, you kind of normally would deviate from a cash basis system. That's one of the things that kind of mess up the cash basis system. So you'd have to deviate from it typically. But uh, so there's a couple ways you might think about how you'd want to do that. So on the inventory side of things, typically we would purchase the inventory on the vendor side of things, pay for the inventory, increasing the inventory on the books as an asset. And then once we sell the inventory, we would sell it with a an invoice or a sales receipt. That's when that asset would then be decreased. So we'd have the sales going up at this point in time, the accounts receivable if it was a, an invoice going up, and then the asset would be decreasing and the cost of goods sold would be recorded at this point in time. That would be kind of a full service type of system, a perpetual type of inventory system. For that to happen, however, you need to have um, the, the accounting software track this information. By the way, I'm, I'm in just using the flow chart on QuickBooks Desktop. So this is QuickBooks Desktop, but we're just looking at the flow chart to consider the flow of things. So for that to happen, then you would need to track the inventory in the system and use the system to track some kind of cost flow, like a LIFO, FIFO average type of system and track the inventory and be able to calculate on a perpetual system with the invoice when you make the sale. That's not typically what you're going to do in Wave uh, because, you know, it, it may not be as easy to kind of track the inventory within the accounting system. So what if you, is there any other way we could basically do that basically? Well, you can have a more of a periodic type of system where you can not be tracking the inventory in the accounting software, but be tracking it in some other location like an Excel spreadsheet, meaning you buy inventory, you count it at the beginning of the day or the in, beginning of the week, the, and then you uh, count it at the end of the day or the end of the week, and you see how much has it's decreased by. So, and then you're going to see how much has been sold. So beginning inventory plus purchases minus in, ending inventory. And if you use that method, then when you purchase the inventory, you could put it on the books as an asset, but not have it be supported by the inventory items being tracked in the accounting system. It's just a dollar amount in the accounting system, which you would then be supporting and backing up with your own schedules on like an Excel worksheet, listing the types of inventory you have, the units of inventory have, and your costing method, like a LIFO, FIFO, whatever, possibly on a periodic method rather than perpetual meaning you're not decreasing the inventory at every point in sale, but you're just counting the inventory and decreasing them with an adjusting entry 
uh, every so often, you know, every, once a day, once a week, once a month or something like that. So that's one method you could use. Uh, and we'll take a look at that on the second month of operations. The easiest method you can do is to say, I'm just going to pretend I'm just going to keep my method on an, an, a, uh, a cash basis. Which means if you not hold on, if you don't hold on to a lot of inventory, like in our case, if we sell guitars and we just get an order for a guitar and then we buy the guitar from our vendor, we have it for a very short amount of time and then we sell it, meaning we don't have a lot of guitars on hand, we just buy and then sell, uh, then the inventory is going to be pretty low and we might be able to get away with more of a kind of a cash basis system in which we would just basically uh, write off the inventory as an expense at the point of purchase meaning we're going to expense it before we sell it, which isn't typically the, what you do. But if you don't have a lot of inventory on hand, then that might be worth the, the timing will be off for a little while, but that might you know be something that would work for that would be the easiest thing to do. So rather than putting it on the books as an asset at all, which is kind of an accrual thing, you would again, just expense it at the point in time that you purchase it. And then when you sell it, you don't have to take the inventory down and put it on the cost of goods sold. You just basically record the sales, uh, just like you would in a service company, increasing income or accounts receivable, the other side going to revenue. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to first post it just the cost of goods sold uh, at, for the inventory item. In month two, we'll talk about the second method where we would put it on the books as an asset, which is a step up in difficulty, even though we're not going to be tracking the asset in the system. All right, so let's go back over and see what happens. That we're going to go back over to wave. That means that the inventory is currently in this uncategorized area. We're going to pull it out of there and we're going to put it into like a cost of goods sold type of account. So I'm going to go then to the first tab and we're going to look at our uh, accounting transactions. We're going to go on down to the transactions. We're going to look at every transaction that looks like it's going to be for inventory. So the ones for us, and obviously you would just be able to recognize your vendors. We buy guitars. So we buy and sell guitars in our mock problem here. So this is an Epiphone. That's one of our vendors that we buy and sell guitars from. So we're going to say that that amount is for inventory. So I'm going to hit the drop down. I'm going to look for a, an expense. And again, I'm not going to put it to the asset this time because I'm just going to expense it at the point of purchase, which is kind of a, it's a, it's a cash basis method, which usually when you have inventory, you kind of deviate from the cash basis method. But this is a, this is how we're going to work it here. So I'm looking for a cost of goods sold type of account so do we have a cost of goods sold i don't see one i'm gonna add one i'm gonna add one i'm gonna go all the way down to the bottom so we get this little plus button down down below all the way down there and there it is i'm gonna hit the plus button we want to make an account the important thing is it's going to be an expense type of account but i'm going to put it into a special expense categorization which is the cost of goods sold i'm just going to call it just that cost I can get the, my fingers on the right buttons on the keyboard cost of goods sold there we have it and then I'm gonna save that so then we have that transaction and I'm gonna check it off as done so we found one other transaction like this one uh, do you wish to review and categorize this and he's, wow that's nice I'm gonna say yeah let's review and categorize that one now note, this is kind of like the suggestion field if you've ever used like a QuickBooks Online. It's basically saying, hey, look, I found another Epiphone that looks like it's the same thing because it's the same vendor. Do you want us to, to do the same thing for that one? And, and it basically, it jumped us up over to this one to help us to categorize it. Now, if there were multiple items, notice that it basically uh, took us to another field here so we can just select all of them. There happens to only be one, but we can categorize all of them in this way. And then we could group the categorization we can take then the category and then we're going to say it's going to go to and now we're setting up that cost of goods sold account that we set up so it's going to be in cost of goods sold let's see if i can type it in here cost there it is cost of goods sold we'll pick that one up and then we could say mark selected transaction as reviewed as we go and that would basically be a batch type of entry so it would mark all of them so i'm going to say done and so there we have that. So now it marked it off. It did basically the same thing for us. And then I'm going to go back to the transaction. So I'm going to go back to the original transaction. I'm going to look for some more of these items down here. So I'm going to go on down and note you, uh, as you check some of these off, if you're not going basically in order straight down, you may want to sort to get rid of the ones that you've already looked at and get those kind of out of the way. And that might be easier to do, but I'm just going to keep them open until the next, uh, next time around. 
Here's the other one I was looking for, Gobson, which should be spelled Gibson. So whoever whoever input this data kind of misspelled that. So, but we won't get we won't get mad at them here. But we're gonna say here it is. I'm gonna change this one to the cost of goods sold as well. So I'm gonna say cost of goods sold. This is another vendor guitar. We bought a guitar from them that we're gonna then sell, and then I'm gonna mark that off as uh, an item that has been reviewed. And I think that's all of them here. I think that's all the ones we want to pick up at this point in time. So let's go ahead and check our reports. Going to go back to the old balance sheet. Going to be updating the old balance sheet. Note what we did not do. We didn't put it on the books as an inventory asset. We basically, we just expensed it at, at that point in time. Instead of putting it on the books as an asset and then having to make an adjustment to expense at some future at some future point. We basically stuck to a cash basis method here, even though we had inventory. So be be aware that uh you, you know uh, that's the easiest thing to do but inventory is one of those types of things where typically you're going to be required at some point to deviate depending on the method and we'll talk about the other method next time which will be a, a uh, periodic type of method that you could put on the books as inventory but then you'll have to do an adjusting entry and that'll be a, a a step increase in difficulty so there we have it and it's in cost of goods sold so if we were then to jump into that cost of goods sold which is basically an expense type of item here we will then see the detail for it. So there's the detail for the cost of goods sold. They're gonna close that back out. This is gonna be uh, the income statement. Notice the income on it is all just uncategorized income at this point in time. So basically the cost of goods sold is what we have categorized now on the income statement and uh, the utilities. At the end of the day, we wanna get all these uncategorized items categorized. That's it for now, let's get out of here.